Hey everybody, we are going to uh, get going here. This is Kevin Bright up here in Wisconsin and uh, I'm excited for uh, this webinar. These are the best, just open line, question and answer. We've got the, uh, we've got the man, the myth, the legend, Craig Holiday sitting here with us. And uh, what we're gonna do is, you have uh, all the freedom in the world to, uh, to try to unmute your microphone and ask a question. If you choose to do that though, we do a little housekeeping tip. You have to make sure once you answer your, or ask your question, make sure you mute your microphone back. Um, it would really get out of control if everybody had, had open mics here, or you've got the freedom to uh, type a question into the chat box and we'll just keep track of those. And, uh, and Craig can answer them as we go along. So um, without, uh, I see there's a couple of questions already down there. So. Um, with that, I will uh, introduce the man, the myth, the legend, the uh, the one full of answers. We're all hoping, uh, um, Craig Holiday. Craig, you muted. Sorry, bro. All you're saying is I'm, I'm older because older people have more answers because they've been around longer. So I appreciate that, man. But uh, no, I'm excited about tonight. You know, we decided to take a break from our webinar and even the training. And open it up, you know, and allow people to ask questions because I know there's people on the call tonight in the, in the webinar that are from, you know, brand new people to people that have been in the business a while. And uh, that way, you know, we just want to be able to interact. Um, you know, my, my question, my answers might get a little lengthy, but I promise you we're going to get your questions answered so you can leave here feeling like you're confident. I know some of you are brand new here tonight. Welcome. If it's your first time, uh, you can, uh, if you would like to, to, uh, Turn on your camera and ask your question. That's fine. If you want to type it in, then Kevin can kind of kind of read those questions and we'll go over those and move in that direction. But just again, let's everybody participate. And I hope you brought a list of questions to ask and we can get started. So, Kevin, we got any questions on the uh, on the written stage where we can go with? Yeah, uh, Sandy Carter first asks this is regarding uh, Dana's post or offer that she put up is she's asking, what is the scoop on gold core? Okay, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm giving up my seat to Dana right now because she's gonna. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not getting in the gold core. Here she is. Well, um, as you guys know, the gold core has been out for a little while. It's just not ready to be launched into the retail or um, to to be sold right now. The price point on it is a little bit high, so we're working on that, but it will be available one of these days. I, I don't know when. So, um, I I mean, if any of you know what the, the um, benefits of 24 karat gold are, they're amazing. Um, I would look up, you know, the benefits for that, it, aging. That's what Cleopatra put on her face every single night before she would go to bed was, well, maybe not every single night, but before she would go to bed, she would put a 24 karat gold on her face, um, plus the Dead Sea. So they've incorporated that together. And so there is a 24 karat gold in each one of those products. There is a um, serum, um, there's a face cream, and then there is a mask. And the mask itself um, is applied like, the M4, um, but you leave it on only for just a few minutes. You take it off with a magnet. It leaves a gold shine on your face, and then you rinse that off. Um, we're seeing some really good results with that, but hopefully it'll be out real soon. I don't know when. Um, it may be limited to spas and salons. We don't know that for sure either, but like I say, the price point on it right now is a little high. You guys see... Um, that is $1,200 for those three packages. So at retail. Um, so if I were you guys, I would try and get some agents signed up and, and get some of that in your hands. The, they're amazing products. So hopefully I answered questions on that. Sorry to, to burst your bubble if you wanted it to retail right now. <laughs> yeah, and if you have product questions, Dana is here so she can jump in and She's definitely better looking than I am. Um, but, oh, hey, I've been hearing, I've been hearing Bright's been like cashing his his uh, secret checks hey, in, turning them to gold, and rubbing that on your face. Is that what you've been doing, brother? <laughs> right. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Those things keep getting bigger, so I think you're, there's probably enough gold there to to do your whole family. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, ready? Next question. Yes, sir. 
have 90 day it's a two part question have 90 day runs worked for you and if so what does your day look like in a 90 day run yeah i think you know the the, the first 90 day run I, I did when i first got in secret and that was just like um you know basically i worked from a, a pretty large list of just people that i knew people on facebook um, a lot of friends that I had created over the three years that I worked with Beachbody, even though I didn't go after any of those Beachbody people, just being in the industry for especially three years, getting around the country. So my days was just calling up people. Um, if they were a distance person, I just call up and, say, and try to connect with them, try to create a need, get a video to them and set them up for a follow up the next day. So it was pretty much just pounding the, the phone all day long from morning until night, sometimes real late at night. Um, East Coast less, but then going back to the West Coast time. So the first 90 day run I did was a lot more of just sponsoring. I put in, I think my first 90 days, I put in around 45 to 50 people in the business. And that was just totally blitzing the phone, getting videos out and making sure we followed up. Because one of the things that people were really are weak on is that they'll call up somebody, they'll say, are you willing to look at the video? Yes, they send them a video. And I know for some people it ends up phone tag and that kind of thing. So you've got to create a secondary follow up time. So if I show, uh, if I get Kevin on the phone, we connect, I get a need out of him. Yeah. I want to look at a video. Say, what, when do you think you can look at it between today and tomorrow? I could probably do it tomorrow morning. Great. How about it? What, what's the time I can reach you tomorrow afternoon? And so you've got to set up that secondary follow-up call. Otherwise you're playing phone tag and it's not, you know, phone tag doesn't mean people don't want to talk to you. And a lot of us take that person and say, well, I've called this guy back about three times and it's going to voicemail. People are busy. And if you're showing the right kind of people, they are busy. You know, if you've got someone who can answer the phone 24 seven, they're probably not the person who's going to build this business. If you've got someone that says, geez, I've been working all day. I've got a, a three meetings tonight. That's the kind of person you're looking for. So make sure that when, you know, anyway, back to the 90 days. So I blitz that. And then the second day would be follow-ups from everybody. I called the first day and more one-on-ones follow-ups, more one-on-ones. And, you know, I was able to sign a, a number of people up because the business was so strong that some of the people didn't even touch product and they got involved in the business because they were able to understand the comp plan, see the power of it. Because, you know, when a, when a company sold now a billion dollars worth of products, they, they have to be good. It's not like they've come out with a new Band-Aid that takes pain away and now I've got to get on the phone and convince you to try this new Band-Aid and you've never even seen it or tried it. Or, and, you know, you're, you're like, what? You know, so we're trying to convince them that the product works along with that network marketing works. And so because our business is so strong from the product side, it doesn't make it, it makes it very easy to get people, pro, you know, get them uh, the videos they need to get and, you know, get signed up before they even touch a product. I mean, if they can go to a spot party, great, but a lot of people can't, but a lot of that's attitude and belief and those kinds of things. So, yeah. So the first 90 day blitz, you know, uh, the next, you know, I'm going to go, Dan and I are going a 90 day blitz right now between now and convention. And that's to put in another, we're each putting in another six people this month and six people the next month. So we're going on another 12 personally sponsored blitz the next two months. And so again, today we spent time, she was on LinkedIn a lot of the day, communicating with people, making phone calls, working our prospect list, but it's communicating with new people. That's the key. And then I have my list of people I called today that, that are in my downline, on my team, checking on them. How you doing? One of the things we're doing now is the new agents that get, uh, get uh, in the business. We're making sure the first 24 to 48 hours, we're calling them personally, no matter where they are. I don't care if they're underneath you, you know, Schwarting, you, Spike, uh, Danielle, any of our people, it doesn't matter. We're going to call them personally, welcome them, see how they're doing, help develop that dream and, and start moving them forward. So it's a long answer to the, to the 90 day blitz. And Kevin, if you have any comments on that, a follow-up question or something that you want to, you think that would help to throw that in. What, uh, staying with that, staying with that topic right there. What's your, uh, what's your response when people, um, you know, I know some people say you need to go out of balance and things like that. And some people still have limited hours. It's not so much, you know, a 90 day blitz is not so much putting in 40, 50 hours of every week, but it's maximizing the hours that you do have for the business. Correct. Absolutely. And I think most people that on a 90 day blitz, the out of balance thing and stuff. I mean, I understand like worry. That's a big thing with worry. Tell your family you're not going to be balanced and all those kinds of things. But at the same time, you know, some of you that, you know, when people work all day, they have minimal hours. It's that you take the hours you do have. I don't care if it's two hours on Monday. It's three hours on Tuesday. It's one hour on Wednesday, whatever 
that time period you do have. If you can get that 10 to 15, even to 20 hours a weekend, I don't care if it's, if you're willing to work Sunday, Monday through Sunday, you get those hours together and put them in and work them. And that productivity is new faces, putting in new people, new conference, new, new, you know, if you can do spa party, spa party, but it's contacting new people. And that's, that's, that's the, what the blitz, that's what the 90 day blitz is all about. Because, you know, you've often heard me say that the business that took you to, if you're a bronze in the business, the business that took you to bronze, that team ain't taking you to, 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 the, to silver. Okay. Part of them will, but you got to replace some of them because some of them aren't going to take the next ride with you. It's just the reality of the business. And, the, and at silver, what you have at silver ain't taking you to gold. Right. And, I, and again, I don't want to discourage people, but I'm just saying some of the people fall off. Some of the active members fall off. Some of the people that say they're going to build a business decide not to after 60 days. So we are constantly in a, in a you know, if, if all of us can go bronze, put in 10 more, go silver, put in 10 more, go gold, put in 10 more, go, go, uh, go ruby or platinum, put in 10 more. You're going to have the business you want for diamond. But a lot of people will stop at the first 10 or hit bronze and, oh, and go back and spend all their time turned around trying to help the people they already got instead of going out and getting more. So they're not being the example of being a leader. They're not adding new people to their team. They're not adding fresh blood to their team, which means that those people that are sitting there that are just stifling, we're counting on them to take us to the next pin level. Okay, I never wanted to do that. You know, my, my motto has always been, believe in all of them, you trust a few of them. Okay, and I believe in everybody in my business, everybody on my team. Do I trust them all? No, because I trust the ones that are doing what they said they're gonna do, right? So it doesn't have a rela uh, relationship with how I feel about them, it's just a trust factor. So you've gotta be really real about, you know, I, this, this group took me to bronze. They ain't taking me to silver. I'm going to go get 10 more. And I'm going to, when I hit silver, this group's not taking me to gold. I'm going to go get 10 more. And then when you get to bronze or platinum and you get to ruby, you see your, you usually will see the people still standing and the ones that are moving on. Th those are your players. Those are the ones that can get it because they've had 90 days to prove themselves to you and to themselves. Cool. Jen Shrek, do you have a question? You've been sitting there on webcam. No, she likes to, she likes, it's a hairdo. She has these hairdos she likes to show. <laughs> well, I, oh. Go ahead. I, I didn't know if I could still see Craig if I wasn't on video. <laughs> that's the only reason why I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> you can still see me, but I, hey, it's great looking at you. No problem, Jen. Do you have a question though? Uh, no. I okay. actually, I just came home from New York. I just walked in the door about um, 25 minutes ago. Well, so. I'm glad you're on. I'm glad you got on. That's, that's, yes. a, that impresses me. <laughs> Good. And if anybody's on here and they want to turn on their camera to ask their questions so we can see each other when we're answering it and stuff, you're welcome to do that. You're welcome to do that. Okay. Let's see. We've got uh, a few more questions coming in. We have uh, third party tools. What are, you know, what are the uh, people using um, and what are you using to third parties use others use and have a great show on follow up calls. So basically, what are the effective third party tools that people are using? You know, I mean, for me, it's like I think part of it is we expect to find the perfect tool that if we send it to everybody, everybody's going to respond. Everybody's going to get fired up about the business. You know, I've sent out a, a group of, of a group of pictures, a group, I mean, a group of videos, a group of different ones. I like, you know, I like the Isaac video that's in the back office. I like the Isaac video that talks about the history of the family or, and, you know, the, the history of the business. I and mean, that's a huge one to me. I mean, I like the 12 minute video that, that they put out from Cancun with all of us on there kind of talking, you know, quick excerpts and those kinds of things. And then the comp plan. So, I mean, there, you know, the site, there's, there's uh, ultimatehomebiz.net. That site has two or three videos on it that are perfect to send out. But I think sometimes we expect to find the perfect video that's going to hit that perfect person perfectly. And I think if you tee them up right, if you tee them up right, I'm not sure what video you send them matters that much. And so a lot of the legwork has to be done in the beginning, asking questions, you know, you know finding out needs, finding out, are you happy where you are? No. Where do you want to go? finding out those kinds of things and then saying, look, I'm going to send you a couple of videos. And I tell them right up front, this isn't to thoroughly for you to understand the business. I want to send you some things that can introduce you to the owner of this company. So you can see the integrity and the character that's there. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to send you one on the comp plan. It's a real simple way of explaining the compensation plan so you can understand it. 
I'd like to send you one just so you can see some of the some of the leaders in the company. You know, we, we have a video from Cancun. We were all down there having a good time and kind of just doing some excerpts and give you some feeling about secret. And so and again, I think I like to ask the question, too, is what do you need to know to make a good decision? And if they say, I just need to know more detail and product, then I'm going to get product videos. Well, I need to know more about where the company's from and, and what the history is and, you know, the, the, the solvency. And I'm going to give them Isaac video. You know, so I, I ask them before I even send a video, you know, what do you need to know? What would you need to know? You know, we've talked a little bit. Uh, you know, I've got a business that's exciting. I would love you to take a look at it. But what would you need to know to make a decision about a business? And, and let them answer that and then drive the videos to that. Book your follow up um, calls and make sure that you, you know, you get that time and date to call on the next follow up and just say, you know, because you know, that's so vital. So many people don't do that and they're, they're, they're just chasing, they're chasing their tails, trying to get to, you know, trying to get a hold of these people. And it, it drives them crazy. It's Frogman, you're on. <laughs> hey, Froggy, Froggy, you got a question? <laughs> nice hair. No, no. Nice hair, Frog. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you good. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, I, I was glad the topic rolled to the 90 day push because, uh, you know, we just kicked off hours also. So right. uh, that's a great topic for everybody here, uh, here, you know, your input on, uh, for sure. Because, uh, I just remember looking back at Beachbody. I mean, be when I did my 90 day push, uh, and I did two of them back to back, that's what actually allowed me to retire from the Navy. So, wow. uh, it is a very powerful system. Uh, we're actually running one right now also so it's good to see that everybody's firing on the same cylinders and moving forward um i know that angela is on this call i was thinking that maybe angela had some questions angela can you uh can you get on your uh can you unmute do you have a question for craig or or uh hey michael yeah. what while she's doing that michael just make a comment for the people here that are going to hit a, a 90 day push the first time what what do they look out for and what what are some expectations and that kind of thing, since you've done it a bunch. Yeah, so so 90, 90 day runs, guys, I mean, the most critical aspect of that is it's, it's all out. Uh, and it's all out. I mean, if you listen to some of the, the, the most revered people in the industry, it, it's mind blowing what they do on a 90 day run. And I don't know that it's always it's always uh, feasible for people to go all out like Eric Warre would do. If you research our, Eric Warre or Higdon or any of those guys that are like full time professional network marketers. I mean, their version of a 90 day run is it's unbelievable. It's excruciating what they do. I mean, they're talking 18 plus hour days, but there's still 90 day runs that we can do when we're part time in this industry. And the, the focus of it is really just getting, you know, coming unglued, focusing to have an output that's higher than your normal week. Um, so your days, you know, uh, Eric Worre said, you know, if you're part time in the industry trying to do a 90 day run, you should really still shoot to do eight hours a day. So if mm -hmm. you're working nine to five, I mean, that's still a heavy workload. But if you break it down and I think 90 day runs really bl uh, there's two major points of it. One, actually, three major points. First of all is communication with your family. Your family has got to know what you're about to do, and they need to know the end state. You know, because husband and wives, you know, they can they can help each other. You can kind of shuffle chores, you know, whether it's taking care of the kids or whatever. Just a clear, concise understanding of what you're trying to accomplish for the whole team, which is the family at the end. That's unbelievably critical to do in the beginning. Two mm -hmm. is a notification to your team. Your team has got to know. You know, if you're going to go on a nine day run and the focus of it is recruiting, um, you know, you need to let the people that count on, you know, that you're doing that, have a conversation with them, you know, and pass them to the support team or whatever. Uh, just notify them, you know, because anybody can do a 90 day run at any time. Just the fact that, you know, November convention's coming, you know, it just seems like everybody's on a 90 day run for a reason. And they are. But you can do this at any time. But you also still need to notify your your players, uh, especially if they're not running with you. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is really, it's just all out effort. Um, you know, we've got no better leadership with, you know, Kevin and Craig, uh, people that have done this. Uh, but yeah, it's all about just amping up what you're typically doing or what you've typically done throughout the day. It's, it's kind of having a magnifying glass on your schedule and really there's just a lot of waste. And even some of the busiest people in America's day, you just gotta, you gotta cut that waste away and you gotta figure out, okay, can I do calls on my break? Um, can I do calls at lunchtime? Um, you know, and that's what a lot of our team is doing right now. They're kind of adjusting to that because it is a bit of an adjustment, but that's kind of my, 
whatever, however long that was, four minute <laughs> version of uh, oh, that's great. That's what great. I think yeah, is no, important on the ninety day. And I think most people are never consistent for thirty days. So I mean, to try to put a ninety day run, so you take those first thirty and you get consistent for thirty, you'll get. Then you say, I can do this. You know, it's like when we worked out P ninety X, same thing, right? The workout. You knew if I did thirty, I can do sixty, and that right. kind of thing. So I see Angela's on here. Hi, Angela. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing great, thanks. Good. Um, my question was because I am new, like I just signed up within the last month, and um, my local network is not the biggest, so I'm just struggling. I wrote down like my hundred people, but out of my hundred people, well, I got eighty-eight. Out of my hundred people, I would say in the ballpark, maybe fifteen of them are here locally. So, what is your biggest piece of advice for someone who um, struggles in that area? Well, I think first of all, you know, you you start you build with the, you build with the local people. I mean, that's who you go to first because you can touch them. You're there. You can sit across from them. You know, you have that connection going because that's really important in this business. Because we talk about relational marketing, so work with them. But at the same time, you know, my personally sponsored people. I live in Scottsdale, and I don't have. Uh, I just now in the last thirty days sponsored my first. Actually, the sixty days sponsored two people that live in Tucson. So my whole business is spread spread around the country. So, but I, you know, through Facebook, through uh, LinkedIn, through, I'm sure you probably have some social media stuff going on, you know, reaching out and realizing that first of all, you know, your business, even if you sponsor someone, even if you sponsor someone locally, they know their brother in Texas, they're going to be in Texas. So, I mean, this, the way our business works, it spreads out so quickly because everything's online. The products are shipped from there to the people. So, you know, you're not limited. Um, I mean, again, building local, I always say build local, think local. But so, I mean, you building that 15, get in business in front of them as quickly as you can, and then turn around and start reaching out, reaching out, start reaching out to people that are, you know, that, that aren't in your state, no matter what state they're in. You might look on our, you might talk to, to Michael and say, okay, where do we have a good flux of people? Like California's got real strong training, San Diego, Arizona does, um, you know, New Mexico. Uh, so there's places where if you, ha if you look at your list, say, okay, where are the people, places we have, like, the Northwest, Portland, Seattle, there's good stuff going on in those states. So if you have those people, you let's hit those people up first. There's a, they can go to a biz off, they can go to a Thursday night biz off, they can go to a Wednesday meeting. So that way you've got support there to support your team because you're not going to be there in the beginning. Just out of um, curiosity, you said a Thursday night biz off? And I'm biz so off. It, well, it's a short, it's short for business opportunity meeting. So what happens is when we do a secret academy, or we do a um, you know a, a training on a Thursday night, a Wednesday night, whatever. Like they're like the California's Monday, San Diego's Tuesday, here in Arizona's Thursday. So they they, they do a biz opportunity. In other words, you bring, let's say you come, you bring a prospect. They they sit for the first hour. We show the business opportunity. Here's how it works. They get to see the products. They just do a PowerPoint talking about the business. Then we take a break, and the second hour is training. It's for agents how to learn the business, what to do. We have a 12 week program that we go through with, with the training program. So if an agent, if someone comes as a prospect and they don't want to stay for the training, they can leave. If they're excited and would like to stick around for an hour, they can stick around. So we call it a business opportunity meeting. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. And we also, you know, we've just, this is the first week we, that we haven't done a webinar. And usually these are a webinar where we spend the first half hour going through the business opportunity. So you can call someone, send the link to them. They can get someone on this weekly webinar. They can see the op business opportunity. If they want to stay around for the second half hour, they can stay for the training. So we have that available every single week too for our team. Okay. Good. good. All right. We've awesome. got uh, other questions. Um, Jamel came on the, uh, the webcam. Do you have a question? Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. I can, I can okay. hear you, brother. All right, perfect. Hey, uh, Craig, quick question. Um, I know um, within the, like, the 90 day run, because I've seen like a few of the videos where they say, you know, uh, take 30 to sponsor 20 or, you know, sponsor a certain amount of people within a certain amount of time. Um, what would be some of the recommendations as far as like when you do sponsor quite a few people? Uh, I guess you could say, you know, when people that actually has like, you know, a lot of you know, full time jobs and a lot of other things going on during the 90 day run, how would you say you correlate? Uh, working with those people and making sure that they're launched correctly as well as continuously uh, sponsoring more and more people at the same exact time? Well, one of the things you, one of the things you can do is you can team up. Let's say, let's say you had a great week next week. You brought four people in. 
So instead of doing, you know, instead of uh, getting one, one on one with a person on the phone or in person, you could do a meeting. We have all four people or all five people together. If it's a local meeting, if it's not, I'll get four people on the phone that are brand new. We can do a blueprint with all for all of us together. So, you know, you, you start, you team them up as you're, as you're, if you're adding big numbers, you team them up and you, and you do your training and your startups with the group. And then as far as spa parties and that stuff, it's just, you got to remember. Remember, even when you're running hard with a 90 day, you want to put people in, but I'd rather get the pre, if I put in four this week, I'd rather get those four started effectively and know they've got a list. I've done some three way calls. I got them started. Even if next week I don't put in my four again, I'm going to make sure they're getting started because we can add eight or 12, but if none of them are doing, are getting started right, you, then you're just wasting your time because you've got a lot of people just with nothing to do. You see what I'm saying? So it's a combination, you know, you want to put in three or four get them together, train them, make sure they know what they're doing, get their list of names together. If you can do a spa party, maybe do a spa party and invite them to, to bring some friends and do it at one person's house. But you start coordinating and, and doing, you know, concerted effort together. Perfect. All right, perfect. Uh, and is it okay if I ask one more question? Sure. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, also, too, um, when it comes to like la um, launching a marketplace, uh, what would be some of the recommendations? Because I know it's a, like a team effort, you know, with a lot of people. Um, how would you say uh, you like what would you say that needs to happen as far as like being able to actually launch an actual marketplace? Well, first of all, you need some core leaders that are willing to commit, you know, and it doesn't take many. I mean, you can put three or four people together. And if you guys commit to, to launch in a city or launch in a community or whatever. But but what happens is, you know, you'll get two or three or four and then all of a sudden two trickle out. And so you're in this momentum phase and you start launching and then pretty soon it just starts to die because no, the people aren't committed enough. And the only way you can launch a new, uh, uh, when you launch a new area is you got to bring in new people every week, new people, new people, new people, new people, new people. Because if it's the same people reporting each week to be trained and it's just only, only agents and you're not duplicating and adding, adding new agents, then everybody starts to lose faith. They start to lose hope that, Hey, this isn't working. I mean, if you go to a meeting and, and, and there's four of you that are agents and next week, there's still four and next week, one person comes next week, only four of you again. Everybody starts doubting that it's even going to work, even though those people may not even be trying to make it work. S4S. You know, pardon me? The S4S. Yeah, you know, and so it's like, you know, it's like the S4S thing, you know, two part, straw parties a week, three people at each party, two straw bar parties a week, three people at each party. But if you're going to launch an area, you, I mean, it, w it will not launch until you, you can have one person be a driver and just going after it. But if he can't get a support team around him, yeah, you're not going to get the momentum you need. So it takes a, a group of three or four, not, not 10, not 15, three or four key people that say, look, brother, I will have a person at every meeting. I will have five people there next week and come hell or high water, you, you get it done. So it takes a strong commitment and a strong, uh, a strong uh, uh, work ethic to, to launch that. All right. Thanks, Craig. Okay. Shorting, you popped on again. You got another, you got something? No, no, no. I'm just uh, listening. I, I, love, I love it when my rock, Jamel Butler, opens his mouth because uh, uh, he's it's, a, al it's always good stuff. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing about Jamel, man. That guy's been – He's when the, when the dust settles, he's always standing, man. I Absolutely. love that about you. I love that about you, brother. So, uh, we got another question, Kev? Yeah, we got you got a few coming in on the in the chat box. Uh, okay. Can we enroll our eighteen year and up children in the biz? Um, is is there? I mean, you have to be eighteen. That part's fine. But is there a? I'm not even sure. Is there a household clause? Can... No, no. I mean, Casey calls sons building the business. I think he's about to go silver. So no. And I, I mean, even if they're living in the house, I mean, the only you know, I mean, you have a situation where you have. You're supposed to have two different addresses for, for so that the only reason they do that is because they don't want you having two businesses. But as long as they know it's a second business and it's not your business, then you're you're fine. You might compliance might send you a letter and say, we notice that you have two businesses signed up under the same address. And all you have to do is let them know it's your son. They see the app. They see and it, it's, it's not a problem at all. OK, cool. Um, what is the best video or audio to use for the initial exposure? If your contact is not able to meet face to face, um, we probably, I mean, again, I, I think it depends upon who the person is and depends upon the connection or, because you know what, I think there's, you know, again, I, I don't think we can say, oh, you know, there's one, two, three, four, we send one, first, second, third, fourth, you know, 
and I, I say this because part of it is I want I want you guys connecting with people on the phone before you just all of a sudden say, can I send you a video, right? Can I send you a video? I want, you know, there's some kind of a connection that needs to take place. Even if it's, hey, how's things going? Hey, I'd like to, I'd like to send you a video. Uh, how's your business? You know, some kind of connection. But, I, you know, I love, again, I, I just like the, I like the, 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 the comp plan video. The one we have now is really simple. It's to the point. Um, I like the, I like secretweapon.com where it's got the thing about the product in there too. So I've, I've had success with secretweapon.com. I've had success with the Isaac video. I've had good success with, um, with the, you know, the 12 minute video that we put together from uh, Cancun. So again, I mean, if you look in the back office, the prospecting video, the opportunity videos that are there, because again, remember if it's the right person in, they're not going to say all oh, that video, you know, the, if it's the right person, they're going to be interested to take the next step. If it's the wrong person, I don't care what video you show them, it's not going to fire them up. So that's just an initiation. So they give them something to look at so that you can take the next step and start talking with them. But, you know, I mean, I'll be, I'll tell you the truth. If I have somebody local, if Jamel lives in my neighborhood and he's a friend of mine, I'm going to show him the business. I'm not giving him anything. I'm not going to send him a video. I'm going to sit down with him and I'm going to do a presentation and I'm going to do a five and five. Wow. And I'm going to talk about the business and I'm going to open up the, the, out, uh, the, uh, the uh, five and five uh, handout that we're doing. And I'm going to walk through it. I did that a bunch of times in California last week. I don't want to send them anything. And then after we're, when the time we're done is they'll say, well, I'd, I'd like a little more information about what I'd like it about the comp plan. Great. I can get that to you. I'd like it about the products. I can get that to you. I'd like it about um, the company. I can get that to you. So I want to sit down with someone and I'm not taking anything except my five products and my, 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 brochure and I'm opening it up and we're going to walk through it when I'm done with that. So don't, don't feel like, you know, you know, Angela said she's got 15 people. What I would do is call up and say, if I'm, if I want to show Angela plan, Hey, Angela, what are you doing Tuesday night about seven? Um, geez, I don't know. You know, if she's married, talk to your husband. Well, we're doing nothing. Great. I want to stop by for an hour. I want to show you some things we're doing in business. I think they'll interest you. And if I can get by with that, if she says, Hey, great, stop by. That's what I want. And I want to be able to sit down because I want to connect with her. I want to find out what her need is, what, you know, what, what her, what her uh, why is. And once I establish that, then, you know, she, I've got a reason to show my business to her because, you know, remember most of the time, if we're just going after someone to show our business to her, it's, it's because we need them. If I sit down with Angela and we spend an hour together and I guarantee in 15 minutes, I'm going to get enough information out of her that I'm going to know I'm going to show my business to her because she needs to take a look at this business. And so that's, you know, that's, so man, if you're, if you're, if you have local people to show, you know, I'm not sending them anything. I'm just booking an appointment to the best of my ability. And sometimes they'll say, well, can you send me some information? And I said, I'd rather sit down and show it to you when I get there. And if they accept that, then I go with it. If it's a stranger and it's a prospect I've met and they don't accept, Hey, no, I'd really like to look at something first. Then I will send them a couple of videos and I'll say, but just remember this, I'm sending you a video, but it's not to sponsor you. It's not to get you in anything. It's going to give you a little bit of information so that you'll, you'll create some questions. So when we sit down together, you're going to have a few questions established and we can go from there. So I let them know that the video is not being sent to them to try to get them in anything. It's not being sent to them to thinking that there's enough knowledge here for them to make a decision because that's not going to happen. That's good. And, uh, you know, a powerful question that you said um, the first go around when you're talking about exposure videos is coming out and asking them, you know, what do you need from me? What information do you need? Right. I think a lot, like a lot of people think like there's a, this video, second video, third video, fourth video, and you're going to have them wrapped up when, uh, if you just come out and ask them, what do you need from me? They'll, mm -hmm. they'll let you know what you're supposed to send them or tell right. them. Right. Right. Hey, Kevin. Yes, sir. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, put Tracy Zimmer on. She's on and I just sent her a text. Said, Are you got your camera in front of you? And let me just give her a little intro because I just want her to talk about, it. I know some of the people on here are brand new in the business. There you are. You look awesome. Okay. Some of the people are brand new in the business and I just want to introduce Tracy to you. Tracy had no network marketing experience at all. She's a school teacher. She lives up in, uh, up in Calgary, uh, in Canada. And she got in the business and in her first 12 months in the business, she was able to get the hundred thousand dollar ring. Now that's unusual for anybody who's never been in network marketing. So I'm going to ask her to take about five, six, seven minutes and talk about, Hey, when you first got in, how were you able to get started enough, not knowing the industry to go out and just run with it and, and to be able to accomplish what you accomplished. So I'm going to, those of you, this is a treat to have her on here. Cause she's amazing. Everybody in this company loves her madly. 
and we were just up there spending time with her. So Trace, just share for a few minutes about your experience and especially for the brand new person on tonight about getting started. Well, thanks for putting me on the spot, Craig. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, when I first got started, I mean, I feel like I had a bit of an advantage because I, I signed and literally a week later I went to convention. So, um, you know, when I first joined, I really did think I was just selling body butter and, and salt and oil scrub. And when I went to convention, I realized there was just something like way bigger out there. There was just, <laughs> there was potential to make money. Um, and I just got really, really excited. And I, I think just hearing everybody talk there and meeting, you know, the, the whole community, um, I came back completely fired up. And like, I mean, I ran, I think, I think I did a six week run <laughs> that time I came back, didn't even know I was doing that, that run, but I just went full on. And I mean, I, I was working full time as, as a teacher. So I, I seen a question on there that said, you know, how can you do these 90 day runs when you're a full time, I guess a full time dad and things like that. But, um, and I have two children who are nine and six. So they're very, very busy as well. We're running to the rink, running to soccer, run, you know, so I get the whole idea of being busy. Um, but for me, I took advantage. Um, I think it was like uh, Michael maybe said of every minute that I had in the day. So as I was driving to work, I was making phone calls. Um, instead of taking my lunch break in the, in the staff room, I, I took it in my room, locked the door, put on videos, was learning, messaging people, doing my work then. Uh, the moment I left the building teaching, it was back on my phone. Um, you know, so it was, it was maximizing every single minute of the day. And, um, and, and I like that. I like that you can do a 90 day run without having to do it for 20 hours a day. Right. So, uh, you know, and I didn't have the network marketing experience. So I was trying to learn this whole industry at the same time. And, and I didn't have a network to really call on, to be honest. I, I called on my friends and my family members and, uh, and I, I mean, Jade Boland will be the first one to tell you. She she goes, I always remember my, your call to me. You didn't ask me to come and sell skincare with you. You asked me to come and join your business, to join this business that you're doing. Um, and you think it's going to be great. You don't know, but you think it's going to be great. And I want you on my team. So she always tells her organization that, you know what, Tracy never called me and said, Hey, I want you to sell skincare. She said, you said to me, I want you to join this business with me. So I, you know, I, I went to my closest friends and family first. And from there, uh, you know, asked friends and family who didn't want to be in the business to at least have a, a wow party for me. So I just went out. I mean, I got lots of customers as well. And, um, you know, that, that was great. But I've also learned that a lot of those customers who love the product after using it for a few months, actually seen the dollar signs attached to the products and seen the opportunity and became agents as well. So, you know, um, I kind of focused on both agents and, and customers. And I found that a lot of customers do eventually turn to agents. And one of them, actually an, an agent on my team, Stacy Robertson, the other day, she was funny. She said, um, she goes, I feel like I don't have any customers left because they all turn to be agents on me. <laughs> but, but it's true. You know, it's that whole idea of getting the product on people and, and just, um, just sharing, you know, um, my husband always harasses me. <laughs> he always says, Hey, like everybody I'm talking to, I leave. He goes, you mentioned secret to them, didn't you? And I go, well, kind of in a roundabout way, I got their contact information, but it's always sharing, always sharing. We go to festivals, we go to trade shows and I'm, you know, I'm grabbing their business cards and, um, and, you know, going that way, continuously building the list. So, you know, I did, I went out on an all out massive, you know, that run and that first run is huge. And, um, I did one more run in between and I'm going to do a run right now as well, um, to the best that I can do. So I'm excited for that. Thanks, Trace. Awesome. You know, again, to do what she did coming into an industry that she never knew anything about. And I, you know, I, I love it because a lot of people think, well, you know, if you look at some of the top earners in our company, well, they've been in other companies. Okay. But, you know, and that's why I think it's so great to point to, point to Tracy because she wasn't in no other company. And this business is a beast to learn. I mean, it's a simple business, but the, when you learn the way you're dealing with people and the disappointments and all the things you have to deal with, and I think that, you know, what's been, Trace, what's been your number one lesson you think you've learned, say, in the last six months about this business that you're going to switch some things up and it's going to be different for you? I mean, something that, that just the light went on or something that you would share. Um, just 
the I mean, in the beginning, obviously, I knew there was an opportunity attached, um, but I probably didn't even see how great that was. Like, I didn't even. I mean, I think I came back from Huntington Beach and I was excited because I, I knew there was an opportunity attached. But honestly, what I said to my husband when I came back, I said, hey, there's money to be made here. I'm going to make enough money to take our family on an all inclusive holiday this year. That was my goal. That's what I thought I was going to do is make, you know, $8,000 to take us on a holiday. And all of a sudden it was like $100,000. And so, you know, in the beginning, when I was asking people to join my business, I had that hesitation. Not sure, but um, this is what I'm doing. And so I think, you know, obviously just being more confident and that comes with time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just, you know, just, just sharing the opportunity, the business opportunity before the products. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Okay. So Brian or Kev, we got some more questions. Trey, stay on. If anybody has a question for her, because I know some of you are probably curious about you know, what she's been able to accomplish and she's, she's knocking on the door a diamond. And, uh, you know, our goal for her is coming up at convention. So that's, what we're going to keep pushing her towards is seeing her on that stage as, as a new diamond at convention. And she's working hard to accomplish that. But <clears throat> some of you are on the call, if you have a question for, for, for trace or whatever, you, go ahead. You got something, Kev? Yeah. Uh, I've got one here. I've done a, I've done a ton of demos, but I can't seem to get past, um, I've, I'm showing people product, but how do I overcome them saying they're interested? They love the products. Money's too tight. Money's too tight to buy the product or money. Are they talking about being an agent? Or are they talking well, about just both? Buying? Both. They, 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 get, they keep getting the response that, yes, I'm, I love the products. You know, I, I, the agent opportunity is very interesting to me, but I just, I can't, you know, it's probably that initial investment, how that conversation has been, is being held. I'm guessing. You know, I think that's a challenge everybody's facing and, you know, and, and this, you know, part of it is, I think there's a mindset. I mean, there's a certain amount of us when we get in this business and I'll get around to that answering that, but I want to say this, when we get in this business, we have a tendency to want to go help people, right? That's my passion. That's why it drove me to build a successful business and make lots of money. But sometimes in doing that, we're going to people that really, they're, they're you know, we want to go help them. We want to go try to rescue them and from their situation. Well, I learned real quick because I realized here's what I want to do. I'm going to build a business. I'm going to go to successful people that are already successful, excuse me, and people that are, you know, have income and are, are, you know, have a decent lifestyle and that aren't broke and aren't, aren't on food stamps and in this kind of place. And I'm going to go build with them because they don't become projects in the sense I don't have to build their self-esteem up. They've got a strong network. They've got good self-image. And all the things that I love about the business and my passion, the business is helping those people that have been, that have hurts from the past, helping those people that do struggle, helping those people that have low self-esteem. But I learned enough to know that I needed to build a successful business first. I needed to become extremely successful because that would be the example to people that were my downline. That would be the example that would prove to them that the business worked. And in doing that, I built it with successful people that were successful already. And I, what I mean by that is they didn't have to worry about Jesus. It's 1450. Oh, no big deal. Okay. Or five. Do it. It's not like, I don't know. I'll have to save for six months to get, money. you know, and again, I'm not putting those people down, but I'm, you know, all of my first six people that got me to diamond and Amway, all of them were making a hundred to 250,000 a year when they got in Amway. I'm serious. All of them, you know, because they were those, but you know what? I didn't have to try to convince them that they could do it. They knew they could. I didn't have to try to convince them on free enterprise. I didn't have to try to convince them about, about you pay a price to, to be successful because they were successful, whether they had a job, one of them was a doctor, one of them was vice president of Continental Airlines. So they were people that had succeeded. A lot of them didn't have any time in their life. So I think part of us, you know, we want to go and we want to go to the people that are hurting the most in their life and are, are broke and struggling. And, you know, the single mom with four kids. And, and am I saying that woman can't do it? No, but I'm saying that I wanted to build to where financially I could afford to help those people. I could afford to go take the time to, but myself, I was $250,000 in debt. So if you're financially struggling right now yourself and you're in debt and you're hurting financially, you need to find the people who believe that A to B journey is much less so that they can launch their business quicker, get to the point where you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars and go give your time away, give your money away, you know, encourage those down and outers. But, you know, also, I mean, people that see a vision, then money's never an issue. Right. If people that see the vision for their life, the big enough why for their life, the DNA people, money isn't an issue. 
You know, if they love the products and they know these products are going to change your life and make them feel better and they're going to look better, trust me, they will find a way to purchase the products, right? If they, if they, if they want to build a business and they, and they know it's 550 to get involved, to work with you and to be able to be successful, the DNA person will find a way to do that, right? I mean, I look at Jamel, he's back on over here. He managed a, a McDonald's. I guarantee you he didn't have a lot of money in the bank. Right. I guarantee he didn't have. But you know what? He found the way to get the money because his dream was bigger than his pocketbook at that time. His dream was bigger than the obstacles. So part of it is we've got to, you know, in those 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 people that don't make a lot, they can be those people, too. But, you know, we when people tell me they don't have money, I say, hold on a second. You know, I mean, this makes me feel bad because how long you've been working on your job? 20 years, 25 years. And you can't put together five hundred fifty dollars. Brother, we need to get started. Right. So let's get creative on some ways we can get that that income for you so you can get started. Let's get let's let's get creative on some ways that we can help you retail product. One, get your package. Let's retail product. I want to team up with you because if you if where you want to go, if you're being honest with me and you want to go where you say you want to go, then listen to me, brother. We need to get started and work together. And I'm going to help you do that. And if they don't, if, they, if it's if it's always a money excuse. Right. I just I don't have enough money. And then you know what? They don't have the DNA. I'm just being honest with you. And they're probably not going to build a business anyway. And I've seen that consistently over and over and over and over and over again in this industry for 35 years. The people that struggle to get it and don't don't ever think about loaning the money to beat people. Don't ever think about giving that to them, because when you remove that struggle from them and you take away that struggle for them to find a way to do it, then it means something. If you give it to them, it means nothing. Right. And so, you know, it's I think, again, it's a couple of things. It's one ramp up who you're showing show people you know can afford to get in business with you show people you know have that attitude and don't be afraid of them and don't be scared of them because those people i've never had a person that was successful when i shared my business ever put me down ever say it wouldn't work because they had the attitude that made them successful the people that'll put you down are my cop buddies when i got in who were making less money than me and said it'll never work you know and they were they didn't want to do anything else with their lives so you know change the people you're putting the business in front of go to your chicken list and watch how many of those people get excited and they're not going to give you excuses. They're going to, they're going to give you a reason to do it. So anyway, I got a little intense on that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to jump a few questions here because there's another one that came in relative to what you just got done saying. And you know, it's, it's what's the key to opening the conversation with those successful people and, and take for a second here, take you out of the mix. You've already been successful. You've already mm -hmm. been a seven figure earner. Take mm -hmm. somebody who's not. So they're, they're clearly recruiting up. Right. Um, you know, what's the initial contact or conversation with someone that is already successful? Well, again, I, I mean, I in the beginning when I started network marketing, I was driving a beat up car and I was worked a construction. I was a blue collar worker and I was going to white collar guys that lived in million dollar homes. And the, and the big part was I believed in what I had. I believe they need it. And the reason why they need it is because I knew enough people that made tons of money whose families were falling apart because they had no time with their children. And dads are complaining about that. I knew that there, you know, the, the, there's three, the three things that drive the business, money, time, and recognition. And most people that are wealthy have, a lot of them don't have the recognition they want, which means significance, which means making a difference in someone else's life. And secondly, they have very little time in their life because if they're driven and they, they want their business to grow, the bigger the business gets, the more time it takes to grow it and to, to, to run it. And so I just went to those people that were burnt out. I knew they were. Sure, they had a Maserati in the park in the driveway. Sure, they lived in a million dollar house. I didn't care because I knew they needed what I had because they didn't have a time in their life. And I sat right across from my first month in the business. And I said, look, in the next 24 months, I will retire through this business and I will have a six figure income and above for the rest of my life. And I will enjoy my life. And I, I know that's what you want. Right. And it's challenging them. I went to a guy the other day and, or, uh, that, uh, that I sat down with in, in, uh, when I was um, in California. And it's one of these guys that has a lot of money and he's been very successful in a lot of different businesses. And, you know, and he's, you know, he's kind of figuring, what would I do this business for? Right. And I don't care if it's me as, 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 as you know, been in the business a long time or you. OK, why would I do this business? I said, well, let me ask you a question. How many people have you helped have what you have? Is that important to you? I mean, you're 45 years old. You're 50 years old. Would you like to wind up your life making a difference in the lives of other people? Or would you just want to go on doing what you're doing? Is that important to you? And, you know, the guy thinks for a few minutes and says, the guy thinks for a few minutes and he says, yeah, it is. And I said, well, then let's talk about a way to do that. Because I know that they're not, that, that, that they want to be significant. That's what drives all of us. 
And so if I'm brand new in the business, if my attitude is what we got works. And if I sat down with you and I was only making nine bucks, which I made my first month in Amway, it didn't have anything to do with the business. It had nothing to do with the opportunity. What I was making, when someone says to you how much you making, my answer is always the same. You know, you wouldn't believe it, right? You wouldn't believe it. But the thing is, it, it, that doesn't change. You know, people say, well, if I'm making a lot of money, it'd be easier to, to go show the business to people. Baloney, right? It doesn't make a difference. The opportunity we have with Secret, with this leadership team, and with this business, that's what, that's what we're presenting. It's not how much money we're making. Okay, I, when I lived in a $5 million home, I had people say no to me, right? It didn't matter because they weren't the right people. So, you know, it, it was, it was, I knew what we had a hold of. And then when you have that kind of belief, you won't back down from anybody. You'll show the wealthiest guy because most of them do not have what John Malott has. John Malott has spent the entire summer down in, at his, at his home and then over hanging out with Kevin Bright and Tara and at his lake house. And he hasn't, I mean, he's, you know, he's met with people. He hasn't worked that much. And you know, his income, I think I just saw his income last week, I think it was $36,000 right? That's what people want. That, that's, that's valuable time with family. That's valuable time to live your dream. Those wealthy people out there, guys, that are living in the big houses, a lot of them can't afford them. And they look good and smell good, but a lot of them are broke. And you just got to, you got to believe what you have they need. How do you initially approach them? Though? You know, and oh, and, you know, and the, way, and the way I call that person up is I just say, hey, Jim, you're a successful businessman. I'm, I'm involved in a business. I want your evaluation. I want to sit down with you. I want you to understand what to do it. And I want you, I want your feedback. Will you do that for me? Just like Isaac said, when he invited his friends over, will you come help me? So in the very beginning, when I went to those people that were extremely successful, I said, look, I need your feedback on what I'm doing. I want to know what you think of it. I want to know what you think of this industry. I'm committed to it. I'm going to build it, but I respect you so much. And I would love your feedback on what I'm doing. And that opened a lot of doors for me. And I always would start my presentation with saying, you know, I know you probably don't need this, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. And they got real interested, some of them. What do you mean I don't need it? Well, I just know you're doing really, really well. And, and then but by the time I present the business, they said, yeah, but I don't have that time thing. You know, so all of a sudden it, it turns around. So I'm just, I'm just doing whatever way I can to sit down in front of someone and help them look at this business and understand what we're doing. Because when they know what you know, they're in. When they know what you know, they're in. I think that goes back to uh, some of the earlier questions on which videos too. If if they're open for the opportunity, if they're opening to listening, you simply taking the approach. Let's let's say that they're not local. Let's say it's not going to be a across the table conversation. But you say, hey, I respect the success you've done in business. I respect your your opinion. I'd love to um, get your feedback on this opportunity or whatever the case is. And then you send them. And again, doesn't really matter which video but you send them a video, well, the people that are gonna be open and receptive are going to respond and ask more questions. And the ones that are not, you move on, correct? Right. No, absolutely. We just have to make sure, because I hear this from agents all the time. You know, First of all, if you're an agent on here new, do not send out emails. Do not send out a, a blast of emails telling people I'm in this new business and I'd love to talk to you about it. Okay, do not do that. Don't send a massive blast of text to your people. Okay, pick up the Correct. phone and call Correct. an individual. Yes. Can you say that one more time, please, so everybody yeah. hears that? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm saying do not. You know, people get started in the business, and the first thing you want to do, well, I'm going to let all my friends know I'm in secret because I'm really excited about it, and you are excited about it. So they send out this email blast, right, and tell all the people, hey, I'm in this business now. If you'd like to know about it, let me know. If you'd like to buy, try some of my products, let me know. And that's their way of communicating to their people. It's the worst thing you can do because what happens is, Oh, let's say you send out 45 of those blasts and I talk to you, I, you know, I talk to you a week later and you say, you know what? I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, none of my friends are interested. I said, what are you talking about? Well, I sent out 45 emails and only five people responded. And I said, wait a minute. First of all, do you read your email every day? A lot of people don't read their email for a week or two. I mean, we're kind of different We're we read email cause that's our business. But so you're taking for granted that these people didn't even that read it and it made a decision not to do it. Okay. Plus they might've gone to spam. You know, so you're assuming that, the, that none of these people are interested in your business. That's the worst mistake you can make. If you try to text everybody, pick up the phone, especially if they're local, pick up the phone and call them. Hey, I'm, I want you to know what I'm doing. I'm excited about it. We've talked in the past and I know that, uh, that you, you've, had some, you've had some struggles in your business. You have ups and downs. We need to get together and talk. 
You know, do not email blast, do not text blast, do not communicate on email at all about excitement to do it. Your voice is what's going to get people excited because it's in your voice. Emails have no emotion, right? There's nothing there. And it's a cop out. It's an easy way to not face rejection, right? But you're going to face rejection anyway, because if they don't answer your email, you're going to feel like, hey, oh, they're not interested in my business. They don't want to be in business with me. That's absolutely false. That's absolutely false. So tell your newest agent, do not do that. Okay. Do not do it. Pick up the phone and call them, right? If you leave a voicemail form, if, if I called Michael Schwarting and I want to show him the business and we're buddies, say, hey, Michael, give me a call. I need to talk to you. I'm not going to leave a long, well, I've got this new business, Michael. I really want to have an, no, Michael, give me a call. I need to talk to you. Give me a call as soon as you can. That's all I'm going to leave on the voicemail, right? Because he's going to call you back. If you try to sell him your business on a voicemail, on a recording, all, you, all you've done is, you know, first of all, he thinks he knows enough to say no when he doesn't. So I'm going to, I've always done in the business for 35 years. I give the least till I can tell them the most. I give them the least until I can tell them the most, right? And that's, that's what we need. That's the frame of mind we need to get in as we're moving forward with this business. If I'm prospecting someone, I don't want to, if, 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 you know, if I say, Hey, I'd like to get together. Well, let's talk some business. Well, what is it exactly? I'll tell you when I get there, right? I'm not going to give them anything because if I give them a little bit, they think, Oh no, I know what that's about. You know, uh -uh, I don't want anything. Let's just get sit down and talk. You mentioned you're tired of your job. You mentioned you haven't been with your kids for the last two weeks because you've been working. Do you want to change that? Yeah, I'd love to. Great. Let's get together. Let's get together and talk. Nothing until I can tell them. Not a little bit of the story until I can tell them the story. And that's important for us. But get away from the emails. Get away from texting. It's a safe way, I know, because you don't have to feel rejection. Pick up the phone. You may not be good at it in the beginning, but I promise you, it's going to be the most effective way you can get people in front of you, especially your more market and those people that know you. They're almost offended by an email. It's like, how personal is that? I'm just, an, I wonder how many people they sent that to today. How many people got those things? People want to feel kind of special and calling you and telling you, I want to sit down with you. That's more special than, than sending out an email to you. Anyway, I got strong with that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. No. Oh, yeah, that's not, let's, let's not lose sight of the fact that this is relational marketing, not email spam marketing. Exactly. Exactly. And you know what, Michael? I mean, uh, Kev, I mean, the thing is, is so many people do this and then they get discouraged. Well, I sent it out and nobody's interested. And I can't believe that, that they can judge who's interested because they don't get a response. If they send 10, they get one and they think nine said no. That's never the way it is. I mean, you get you have emails right now you haven't answered today or yesterday. And those people are sitting there thinking, oh, he must not like me. He must not be interested in what I want to talk about. No, it's not true. It's just a matter of, of timing. And, and, you know, and so that's why the phone call. I and mean, we have to go back to old school. Old schools, dial it up, pick up the phone and call. I mean, that's, that's, that's how you're going to drive your business. And for those that are new and, and, and sitting back feeling fearful that, well, I don't know any information. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't want to sit down with somebody across the table because I don't know what I'm going to tell them anyways. Well, that's where the exposure tools come into place. That's where the three-way calls come into play. Mm -hmm. You know, you use the people that are more experienced than what you are. The process is still the same, mm -hmm. but you use the tools that are there. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? I mean, there's people on here that are brand, brand new in this business. And maybe you've been in the industry before. But I think one of the things that, that you're going to learn with our, with our leadership and what we're about is, you know, it is about connecting. It is about relationship. That's a culture of what we've created in our downline and our, on our team. And that's why you might hear someone else in secret talk about, you know, massively sending out videos or massively doing this thing. I just know, and it's probably because that's where my heart's at and I know our leadership's there. It's we got to connect with people. And when you connect with a dozen people who, with DNA that want to change your life, you're going to build a multi-million dollar business. And so, you know, when we're thinking every day of, of what ways can we get to people, what ways can we share a product, what we, you've got to think about, you know, this whole idea of connecting. Don't tell them your story till you hear theirs, right? Don't tell them your story till you hear theirs. They'd rather talk about themselves. Now, if I can ask questions and you, and, and they ask me a question back, I ask them one right back. What do you think? You know, guy, you know, I'm talking to a guy and it's like, I said, well, how's, how's things going? Well, not that good. You know, we're struggling a little bit. I go, how does that make you feel? Well, not really good as a man. You know, I struggle with that. How can you change that? You know, so you ask those questions over and over again, because then there's a connection. And you know what? They want to see you a second time, right? Because, you know, it's kind of like that person was pretty cool. That person was really in, about me and not about selling them product, not about getting them in my business. And when you connect with those people at that level, 
I'll, I'll tell you what, they're going to listen to you and they're going to join you and people join you in business. They, they, they're not getting in just secret. They're joining you because you're the kind of person that they're dying to be around and the kind of person that uplifts them and encourages them and believes in them. And they can see that in a, in a 30 minute presentation. We've got, uh, we're at the top of the hour. We've got a, a few more questions that um, let's try to fly through. Um, hey, Jamel, you popped back on the webcam. I, I, I was just about to read another part of a question that you had typed in. Do you, do you have another question? Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, this is uh, for Tracy and Craig. Um, for a lot of people that's out there, like uh, like a lot of the newer agents that may feel like, you know, they don't have a lot of people that they maybe can connect with and through Facebook. Because I remember Tracy was saying how she, you know, when she first got in, she didn't really have uh, like a huge network. Could y'all kind of like, you know, uh, real quickly, like kind of just go over briefly places that y'all may have found like, uh, you know, top uh, agents in the company or people that actually, you know, made it to, uh, you know, like different ranks or like higher ranks and whatnot in the company like Silver and whatnot. Because I know a lot of people automatically assume that if they don't have people that there's no one that they can talk to. But, you know, there are other ways that you can actually network through, you know through the people that you know as well, like cold market, so to speak. Right, right. right. Actually, Tracy, Tracy, Tracy jumped Tracy. off, but all that, you know, the thing is, is you almost have to be in this mentality where I'm going to meet some, you know, every day I'm out, I don't care if I'm pumping gas, I'm going to meet somebody and I'm going to, I'm going to connect with them. I'm going to get a business card every single day. You know, I don't care if you go to the bank. I don't care if you go to drop the cleaning off. I don't care if you, if you're driving to work, I don't care. I mean, I used to be driving home from work and I'd look in a gas station. I'd see a good looking, sharp looking person in a Mercedes or something. I'd pull right in behind him. I didn't need to pump gas. I just stick the thing in there and I start a conversation. What do you do? I'm an attorney. Hey, give me your business card, you know, and I'd connect with them. So it's adding to that list every single day. And then it's those are the people that are good on social media and Facebook connecting in that way. You know, being willing to connect with people and, and you know, in, in, in that process, I think I think for Tracy, what she was referring to, she didn't have a large network of people. She had a large group of friends. Right. But in the beginning, it was kind of like, well, am I really going to invite my friends in this business because I'd rather meet other people? But, you know, she quickly called them up and said, I just need you on my team man. I'd love to have you on my team. Cause I'm excited about what I'm doing. So, you know, you work, the, you work the closest, uh, the closest group first. It's like, if you have a target, right, you got the middle, which is your close emotional family group. Then you got the next circle, which is those you probably work with, go to church with. And then outside that circle is your all cold contacts, but we got to work all three, right? The, we should be in the middle. Our first 90 days in the business as much as we can with the middle being family, close friends. And then we move out to the second circle, which is that next group, which is the people from church, from work, people like that. And then we move out to the outside circle, but we need to be adding because Jamel, if you got a list of a hundred names and you put a new name on every day, you'll never run out of your names. You'll always have a hundred names on your list. But if you got a hundred names and you're down to 10 and you're not where you want to be, you're going to panic. So just adding that new name every single day, just by being outgoing and, and getting business cards and asking questions and those kinds of things. Is that good, Jamel? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, another another question relative, and Tracy kind of addressed this too, but um, um, just being a, a full time single father, working nine to five, basically the extremely extremely busy schedule. How do I still find time to do this biz? And um, and you kind of addressed it right there. Tracy addressed it as well. That you know, just living life with your antennas up twenty four seven. And, you know, that uh, recognizing that there's not necessarily a hot lead, cold lead, A lead, B lead, what, but that, you know, that everybody is a potential lead that you just need to be willing to open your mouth and share with people no matter where you are. It's not like I go right. out, go out working uh, the secret business. You simply work the secret business while you're out. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Alert to life. You know, you, you, you share as you go. You don't go to share. And I think, you know, and I think part of the key too is just, um, you know, it's time management. I mean, to be real honest with you, if I'm a, if I'm a, a, a husband, if I'm a, a dad, I'm a, I got a job, then I've got to figure out how many hours a week I can work this business. And I got to make sure those hours get, the business gets worked. And so to use an excuse that I'm just too busy, you know, I, I can take anybody with 168 hours a week and I can deduct all the hours you're spending and I'll still find you 12 to 15 where it's discretionary hours where we can work the business. So if you're willing and you want to build it, and then we, what we do is we make sure if it's two hours in one day and three the next and one the next, that we're doing the productive things that create in, that increase the size of your business during that time. We're not just spinning our wheels. So as mentors, as leaders, it's important that we're setting up accountability. We're setting up 
excuse me, a game plan for our people that we're, that we, we know that if, if this guy said, I'm going to work 15 hours this week, what did your guy do that week? What did he do each of those hours on Friday? Call me, let's talk about it. So you got it for someone who's, who has that, you know, challenge in his life, we can do it if you're willing, but you're going to have to get real disciplined on what you're doing. And if you do, and remember too, in this business, this is a powerful part. You know, I might sponsor Kevin and he goes, look, I got 15 hours. I got a fourth kid coming. I'm, I'm selling insurance. You know, my wife's, uh, you know, she's a stay at home mom. I, I got 15 hours. That's all I got. But remember now, Kevin could sponsor someone, you know, could have sponsored someone like me in the beginning. I put in 20 hours a week and I was killing it. I crushed it. Right. So if I'm putting in 20 and he's putting in 15, that's 35 a week. If he has one more person that's putting in 10 a week, his business is growing 45 hours a week right? 45 hours a week, but he's only putting in 15. And that's the power of what we're doing. Because all of us that think about our time, a guy who says, I don't have time, then I said, this is the perfect business for you. Because you're going to duplicate that time, right? It's going to be a team where all of our hours are adding up as a team to work together, right? So it's really important that they understand the, the power in duplication and the power of, of adding teammates who put in 10 hours, 10 hours, 15, 10, 15, it adds up to 80 hours a week, and you're putting in 10 to 15. That's the power of putting a team together. That's the power of not just moving product and not just selling product. It's putting a team together, duplicating the hours and helping them do the same thing. Yeah. If you don't have the hours, find people that do. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, the famous Danielle Taylor has uh, logged in on webcam. He's arrived. Hey, let me just say something. Are you gonna, I know you're going to say something, but let me say something. First. Danielle is absolutely crushing this business right now. I'm so proud of her. She is, she's working so hard. She has an you know, amazing team. I was just there for four or five days. And I just want you guys to know, I mean, you know, if you, if you need advice or something, get on, you know, you need to get her on Facebook or something because she is just, she's out there. She's bold. She's fearless. And she's doing the spa parties and she's starting new, new leaders. And people are, anybody that gets sponsored by her is lucky because she's out there tearing it up and she's relentless every single day. So anyway, um, the only thing is she gets emotional. But other than that, I'm working on that one. So, so you, you give us a couple of your comments, girl. Oh, thanks. I really wanted to just have you address something. I have a few new agents on the webinar tonight. And uh, the question came up about the $150 package. If someone can't afford the 550 or the 1500, I rarely have ever let anyone in the business for less than 550. And I was hoping you could go over that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I mean, part of it is, you know, from the get go, I think it's important that, you know, when you sit down with someone, you find out what they want. Right. And the, and the question is always, you know, hey, Danielle, what do you want? When do you want it? Right. And, if, and most of the time people are going to they're going to be aggressive. I want this in this period of time. I'd like to make, you know, I'd like to make 50,000 my first 12 months in the business. OK, so and I'm kind of preparing them for what the investment's going to be. So if somebody says, I want to make $50,000 a year in the next 12 months, my response to them is, is what I say is, what do you think it would cost to do that? I mean, if you started a business and you could make $50,000 in 12 months, what kind of investment do you think would make? And usually they're quoting some number that's way above the 1500 pack. And I said, you know, I said, well, it's never going to, it's not going to be, it's not going to be anything like that. And so once I get the need out, then when we, then when we get to the point about the packages and part of it is attitude doing that. I mean, so many people, I'll get on three-way calls with people and say, Craig, can you talk about the packages? Cause I haven't done that yet. Like they're afraid to talk about it. Right. And anybody that's ever owned a business the, the, the biggest package is a joke as far as getting started. And so I try to prepare that mindset while I'm showing the business, talking about it. And then when it gets down to it, you know, I say, look, we have a 550 pack. I don't even talk about the 150. I say I have a 550 and a 1450. Okay. I don't even talk about the 150. If they see a 150, I say, look, here's the challenge you're going to have with that. Do you want to build this business? Do you want to be extremely successful in it? Yes, I do. Well, then there's two things. One is you can't open a, a, a you can't open a furniture store with a chair and a, and a and a and a stool. Okay, you have to have product to do it. And then secondly, whatever you do will get duplicated in your business, right? So you're shooting yourself in the foot. And I almost, as your sponsor, as your upline, I almost am adamantly going to say I would not do that for you because all I'm doing is is preparing you to fail in this business. Because anybody that comes in is going to say to you, where did you get in in this business? The minute you say 150, they're going to buy a product that disallows them to do a spa party. The first thing we do is we launch with two spa parties. They can't even do that. So what you've done is you've given them a $49 spot. You, you give, they bought $150 of product, which is just personal use, basically. And now they can't build the business. They can't even get started in the business. 
And so the my thing has always been, you know, adamantly, let's find a way to get the 550. Let's find a way to take up from 150 and find a way that we can get you started. Because if you want to build and you're serious at being building, if you just want to try products to sample them, then I'm going to make you a preferred customers. I'm not going to give you a spot in the binary. Because if I put you in the binary for $49 or 150 and tomorrow we sign up your brother-in-law and he puts in $14.50, he's down in your downline and, and you made less of an investment than he did. And he'll always know that. And so, you know, I'm always talking from a business perspective. And so I can't start a, but you can't start a business for that 150 investment. And so I'm just really strong on that, you know, because I, I don't feel like I can help them. I, I, we, they don't have product to get started. They can't do a spa party. So what are we going to do? We're going to sit around and they're going to get their product. They're going to be at $49.95 and maybe they're at $50 a month replenishment, maybe not. And they're going to get this small amount of products and they're, 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 you've just, you've set them back 90 or 30 days right off the bat. And so I've been always been adamant on that. I mean, I don't think I've ever, ever signed a 150 up. Okay. And again, you know, it's just, and usually they come around after we talk about it because I want them to have success. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to set them up in business to fail. And that's what I'm doing. If I get them and if I let them come in at the 150 period, you know, so that's just my mindset. And I, I know Kevin's the same and Michael's the same because that's in a year the same, because that's what I've taught you. And that's what we've done from day one. And that's why our businesses are growing. And that's why it's getting duplicated. If you sign somebody at the 49 or the 150, you're making it easier on yourself to sign them, but much harder on them to be successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you sign them at the 550 or the 1450, maybe it's a little bit more challenging on you to have that conversation because it's not something you're used to, but you're making it infinitely easier on them to be successful. So be focused on easy for you, but hard for them or hard for you, but yet easy for them. Right. No, that's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah. It's, it feels good for you, but for what reason? I mean, you know, you, in this business, you don't make money by active members. You make money by volume. So if I sign up a 49 and they go on the, and they go on the, uh, and the, the, even if they go on replenishment, okay, that's a small amount of any kind of profit that's, uh, that's going to build into your business. Right. And so, I mean, the $49 is, is just all it is, is, I mean, sure. You can say I got an active member and, and now I got 25 on my left, 25 on my right, but it doesn't pay well. You know, and, and you're a business partner. And at the lower levels, the, the active members don't, don't count for rank advancement anymore. And why do you think they did that? Because they want you to be profitable. To wear a bronze pin and be a bronze in the business and make no money, that's not what I want for my people. At silver, I want you most profitable. And the way we do it is with volume. And if you're training on volume and you're teaching volume and your people are buying the packages and their people are buying packages, you will make the highest profit at each level in the business as you rank up. How long do you wait or how do you approach uh, past people that maybe were not interested in the business? So at, at one time you approached them, they said not interested. How do you re-approach them? Well, usually I don't, you know, for me, I didn't re-approach them. I built it without them and they approached me because I had success. And so if you're going back to them, it's, it's only because you haven't found it. You, know, you haven't got anybody else to go to. So the people that said no to me along the way, I always say there's never no's. They're just not right now's. The people that did that, I knew my only credibility with them was to have success. My only credibility next time I see them is for, to have a check bigger than the last time I saw them. And so if I don't have that, I don't go back to them. They come to me. And that was my mindset. And that forced me to move forward. That forced me to, to, to if, if somebody said no to me, not right now, great. You know, love your brother. I'll see you, you know, family member, non-family member. But I'm not going back to them because I don't need to. I'm, go, I'm moving forward. And you'll draw those people to you by moving forward more than you will going back to them and trying to, you know, trying to go to them again, see if you can't get them in the business again. You know, you don't need to do that. There's too many good people. They will come back. A bunch of them will come back. Yeah, reach out to them once in a while. Say, hey, I know it's not for you, but uh, things are really helping. I'm helping with the expansion. And, and who do you know in your area that I can be reaching out to to share this with? <laughs> and just keep and you know what? That, do that yeah. a few times and they'll, they don't want to be left behind. And they'll ask you, Kevin, they, I guarantee you, when you see those people, they'll always say, how's it going? How's that thing going you were doing? They want to know. And I always said, oh, forget it. You weren't interested anyway. It's going great. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about something else. And that would frustrate them because they wanted to talk about it. It looks like the Frogman's about to make it. Yeah, no, I was just going to piggyback on that. And I like absolutely what both of you said. But, you know, the other thing that we have going for us is we're definitely a product business. So we have 
you know, the ability to kind of do per periodic reviews or follow-ups with people as new products get released, you know. So, because like I, like when the shampoo came out, I went back and talked to people that, and you guys know, I don't, I don't try to move product. I try to, you know, move people and I'm looking for agents, but I use that as an ability, you know, as a conversation starter, you know, and started off with, Hey, you know, I know you said that this isn't for you, but I just want to let you know, you know, this amazing new shampoo and conditioner that we just came out with and, and business is still booming like crazy. And I'm going to touch on those parts, but you know, we have some other products that are going to come out shortly and that's going to be a great, you know, opportunity if people choose to use that also to do those right. follow-ups. Right. Frogman, you, yeah, Frogman, do, you, do you have any credibility talking about shampoo and conditioner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, the thing is, is, you know, I, like I said, I, I never got no's. You know, anytime I'd felt like someone was, was not going to get in, I said, look, I think, I think the challenge is the timing's not good for you right now. And they go, yeah, that's kind of it. And I'd let them off the hook. And then I'd always keep them in there. And they, I always knew they were in the grandstands watching me grow, watching me build. So those people, believe me, you guys, if you build and your lifestyle increases and your business increases, you're going to, you'll capture a bunch of those. If you don't, you okay, that's why it's easier to build fast than slow. Because if I go out my first six months and I, I, I do a substantial growth and I make substantial money, okay, those people are going to listen. If it's a year, I'll, I may never get some of them back because they've lost their belief. But the faster I build it, the faster my income grows, the faster my business grows, the better chance I have of capturing those people sooner. Okay, we're we're like at eight eighteen, man. We've been rolling. Yeah, but yeah there's. Bit, I think I, I think we've got almost all of them. There's one big one here that uh, this is probably a training all by itself, and it's social media. You know, yeah. finding people on Facebook, finding people on LinkedIn. I'm not okay, sure. Okay, great, the great lead in to my next point. Yep. Next week, I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna have Kevin get together. Tracy Zimmer's husband, Shane, great guy. He was a professional hockey player, amazing guy. But he's been in, he's been in uh, IT uh, industry for years and years. He's going to do a webinar for us on how to use LinkedIn and how to use it effectively and be really good at it. All the different aspects of it, how to utilize it and all those kinds of things. So I've, I'm supposed to give him a call tonight when we get off. Um, I haven't told him next Wednesday, but hopefully he'll be available. And he, he already told me when I was up in Calgary that he'd be willing to do a webinar for us uh, for our whole team on, the, on LinkedIn. So that's that's the plan for next Wednesday night. Um, that's what I'm going towards now. So I'm glad you asked the question about social media because I think I think him being able to go through the details of it and how to be effective on LinkedIn would be great for all of us. So we'll be promoting that during the week once I confirm and we'll get the information out to everybody. And it should be a great, I'm going to actually be in Puerto Rico, probably flying there on Wednesday, so I won't be able to be on it. But uh, you guys will be hosting it and Shane will do an amazing job. We can record it. That way we'll have it available for people. Perfect. I think that uh, I apologize if I've missed any questions. I don't think that I did, but um, obviously an hour and 20 minutes worth. The, yeah. the, question, the questions are certainly out there. I think these, uh, these Q&As are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, what about the opportunity for people? If, if they still have questions, uh, throw them on Life Secret page. Yeah. And, um, you can That's answer funny. them or even, even you know, put together a little... Uh, little uh, 30 second, one minute, couple minute clips answering the questions. That'd be okay too. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but I think if you just want to close it out, I think we've gotten all the questions that were asked here. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. Let's wrap it. And thanks for everybody jumping on and uh, you know, we'll do like next week should be the social thing. And then we'll, we'll uh, figure out what we're going to do the following week. If we want to take another one of these Q and a formats, we can do that. And if, for a brand new agent to get on too, it gives them a chance to see the people and meet them and, I love this format. So thanks, Kev, for hosting, and we'll, we'll talk to you all soon. Sounds good. Have a good night, everybody.